July 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 from the New Testament. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that could defile the body and the spirit, and thus accomplish holiness out of reverence for God. Make room for us in your hearts. We have wronged no one. We have ruined no one. We have exploited no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I told you before that you are in our hearts so that we die together and live together with you. I have great confidence in you. I take great pride on your behalf. I am filled with encouragement. I am overflowing with joy in the midst of all our suffering. For even when we came into Macedonia, our body had no rest at all, but we were troubled in every way, struggles from the outside, fears from within. But God, who encourages the downhearted, encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. We were encouraged not only by his arrival, but also by the encouragement you gave him, as he reported to us your longing, your mourning, your deep concern for me, so that I rejoiced more than ever. For even if I made you sad by my letter, I do not regret having written it. Even though I did regret it, for I see that my letter made you sad, though only for a short time. Now I rejoice, not because you were made sad, but because you were made sad to the point of repentance. For you were made sad as God intended, so that you were not harmed in any way by us. For sadness, as intended by God, produces a repentance that leads to salvation, leaving no regret, but worldly sadness brings about death. For see what this very thing, this sadness as God intended, has produced in you. What eagerness, what defense of yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what deep concern, what punishment, in everything you have proved yourselves to be innocent in this matter. So then even though I wrote to you, it was not on account of the one who did wrong, or on account of the one who was wronged, but to reveal to you your eagerness on our behalf before God. Therefore, we have been encouraged and in addition to our own encouragement, we rejoiced even more at the joy of Titus because all of you have refreshed his spirit. For if I have boasted to him about anything concerning you, I have not been embarrassed by you. But just as everything we said to you was true, so our boasting to Titus about you has proved true as well. And his affection for you is much greater when he remembers the obedience of you all, how you welcomed him with fear and trembling. I rejoice because in everything I am fully confident in you. God, in this passage, there's uh, there's an area that a lot of people get confused about or aren't quite sure what it means. But it's where you're talking about, or in this case, Paul's talking about, uh, for you were made sad as God intended so that you were not harmed in any way by us. For sadness as intended by God, produces a repentance that leads to salvation, leaving no regret, but worldly sadness brings about death. So uh, he's actually talking about two different types of emotions. There's this emotion of worldly sadness, and there's so many things in this world that create sadness, disappointment, um, being lied to, uh, rejection, uh, loss of something that we think is important. All of those things are, are worldly sadnesses. If, if somebody says something mean to us, the worldly sadness. If we lose our job, um, if even if somebody cuts us off on the road, uh, sometimes that can be worldly sadness. Those are all things that the world brings about. But the sadness that is brought about by you, God, is fully intended as almost a discipline type of situation. That if we can be made known of the errors in our judgment and our ways and of not following you, then of course our heart's going to be sad if we truly understand with repentance what we have done against you. Um, if we don't, there's not repentance, there's not forgiveness, and there's not this, this sadness that overtakes our heart. I remember many times uh, going through this with you, God, that I had either done something obvious and intentional against you, and because you loved me, you just you chose to discipline me and bring that to light in my life. And other times there's things I didn't 
intentionally do, but it doesn't mean that they were right or done in the way you wanted me to. And even those things you've brought into my heart saying, look, this may be how the world does it, but this is not how I want you to do it. And, and there is a sadness that I am recognizing in my life and knowing that it's not the sadness of the world, but it's the sadness that is produced by, by your loving discipline, God. Um, in this day and age where parents raise kids to like them rather than as parents, uh, we, we sometimes don't fully understand what discipline is. And discipline from you comes from love for wanting what is the very best for us. Uh, here on earth and in our relationship with you. And sometimes we get so frustrated with that discipline uh, that we forget what the motive is behind it. Uh, so God, today, please remind our hearts that if there's any sadness that is produced in our life from things we are doing wrong uh, and we're coming into repentance into your world um, through your love, uh, that we always remember it is from that point of love and grace and mercy and forgiveness that you are bringing that sadness onto us, onto our hearts so that it does lead to salvation. So it does lead to changing of hearts. So it does lead to changing of lives as we go forward in this world. God, for all the worldly sadness out there, I do pray for those people's hearts. It's so difficult to live in this world for so many reasons. But God, I know that you're watching over every single one of us and just wrapping your arms around us and loving us. In your son's name I pray, amen.